Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Success Shift. My name is Jake, and today we're on Friday, recapping the week. It's been a very different week for me, um, from Monday to Fridays, down to three days a week this week. But I am very grateful for the ability to, I suppose, set my own timetable. You know, we often have plans and intentions and personally something that I've done in my past is I'll take something on, I'll do it for a little while, it'll get too hard and then I'll just stop completely. Um, and I found that much like most of the times in my life when I've started something, I've I had the motivation, I have the idea and then I get started, but then, you know, life gets in the way. Let me put some ones in the chat if you've ever had life get in the way. I mean, I'm sure everyone has used that excuse at some point. And it does. Things get busy. You know, things pop up. The unexpected happens. But I think for me, I'm really grateful for the growth and development that I've had to become self-aware of myself and the traits that I have. Um, and I know my flaws and I know my weaknesses. And with that, I'm able to work extensively on those things to better myself. And so it was a big decision for me when things were getting a bit busier, um, you know, doing a call like this, which as for those of you who know show up it's completely free it's just me trying to share knowledge and give back value to everyone who's listening there's no catch nothing i'm just trying to share my um my knowledge to other people and help them grow it does hold me accountable which i really like and it holds me accountable for finding gratitude and for continued learning so that is you know i am giving out but i am getting from it as well However, I've had the ability to learn and become self-aware in the sense that I go, no, I'm not going to make this too hard for myself. I'm not going to put so much pressure on me to keep up a standard that I can't keep up until it gets overwhelming and I want to stop. So obviously we have to find that balance. And as you, you all know, I'm in, a new father and well, not so new anymore, but still five months old. And he's constantly growing and changing, which means that my life has no set routine I never really has, so I'm used to that. But what I have found is, and what I'm really grateful for today, is that ability, ability to acknowledge myself and acknowledge the changes in myself from what I used to do to what I'm doing now. And this is why I've dropped down um, to three days a week so that I can keep afloat on things, but so that I can keep consistent. For me, three days is much more manageable than five days. It's ability to uh, manage my time, be aware of what I can handle, be aware of my situation, my stress, all those other things that come along um, with life i guess and so i'm very grateful today for that ability to and i think it's more not the ability to have the awareness but now that i'm observing my awareness and my change and my growth you know before maybe as i was changing i wasn't quite aware of what i was doing but now it's become over time with more practice it's become much more visible to me and i can look back and be like wow before i would do this and now i'm doing this and so i'm very proud of myself and often you'll hear me say find gratitude in people and i think it's very very okay and in fact encouraged to often find gratitude for yourself and the things that you've done in your life and the growth and the changes that you're making so that's what i'm grateful for today chucks your gratitude in the chat we've got some coming in already grateful this morning for perspective and knowing i can change mine that is very powerful very 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 powerful the ability to understand that you have the choice to change your perspective at any point in time will change your life I'm sure you've heard me say it before that I live my life by that motto, life's about perspective, because if you can find a different perspective on things, you can usually find a different attitude, a different mindset, a different emotion, a different feeling towards a situation, often one that you're holding on to, and this can in turn change the entire way you think about and thus feel towards any situation in your life. And so the sooner you realize that you have that ability to look for a different perspective, one in which brings you joy rather than negativity, one in which brings awareness to the positive or maybe the empathetic state of someone else. You know, why did this happen? This is how I feel about it. What other perspective can I find to relieve me from these negative feelings? You have the choice to do that in any situation at any time in your life. And the ability to understand that and practice it repetitively will change your life. And I know it's changed mine. And I still find my times where I have to snap myself in and go, right, what am I doing? Change my perspective. Look at this. Why am I choosing the negative path? But it's a growth. It's a development. And it's something that I think with more practice becomes easier and easier. Really love that. So thanks for sharing that one. It really, it really triggered me. 
Grateful for graceful self-analysis and technology that brings my husband home to me safely. Nothing like having a partner come home safely. That's lovely. I'm grateful for reflection. There's so much learning and personal growth that occurs when you simply look within. Very, very true. Very powerful gratitude this morning, just like yesterday. This group is turning up with the gratitude. It's turning up with the knowledge, even just the responses and the engagement that I'm getting. I can see that we are having some growth here. And again, there is so much learning and personal growth that occurs when you simply look within. That is so powerful in itself. I mean, the entire concept of success and happiness in my mind is the ability to choose and see it. Let me say that again. The ability, the entire, my entire aspect towards success and happiness is your ability to choose and see it. Is your ability to choose and see it. Yeah, let's stick with that. Okay, sounded better the first time, right? No, what I'm trying to say here is that success is a state of mind and so is happiness. And at any given point in, of time, we can find happiness in a situation. Sometimes it's much harder than others. We can find we can feel like we have been successful depending on what we compare ourselves to, depending on how we see ourselves. This person you are right now compared to maybe the person you were five years ago, I'm sure you are successful compared to that person. Again, this isn't standard for everyone. Happiness, again, is a thing that comes. It's it's not something that you can chase. It's not something that you can do. It's something that comes along with creating a lifestyle that you like or making the decisions to do the things that you like so that you you, you feel the happiness. You know, you listen to a joke, you feel happy. You laugh. You hit an achievement, you feel successful. You're proud. And so looking within and finding the state of mind that allows you to find the happiness, to find the success, to find the joy, whatever it is, is extremely powerful. And even in the shitter situations, if you have that strong personal development from understanding your behaviors and good segue, your self-awareness and your self-management, then you're going to find life a lot easier. And that all comes from, as you've just said, simply looking within. And I think the fact that you're catching on to that and what you guys are sharing in the chat here it just shows that that growth is coming along and the more we look within the more we discuss what's happening inside externally and hear other people's situations and ideas and concepts the more we can grow internally i was listening to tom bill you bill you i always say his name wrong um the guy from Im who runs impact theory and who um, created quest and he was talking in one of his speeches that basically Mindset is everything and you have the choice basically to decide whether or not you want to see yourself as successful or see yourself as um, struggling. And the more you decide to see yourself as successful, the more that will sort of act as a catalyst. And I found it very, very empowering um, because again, it comes back to this choice, that perspective, that ability to look within and go, where am I at my current point? How do I feel about this? And where can I go? Anyway, I digress a little bit. Today, I want to sum up with what we're speaking about this week. We were talking about the successful traits of um, a, a, the characteristics of a successful trader. Well, that was a bit of a tongue twister for me for some reason. Um, and what we're talking about was discipline, consistency, strong willpower, confidence in your ability, decisive action. And we spoke yesterday about good intuition and how to trust your intuition. And we touched on strong emotional intelligence, which I want to delve a little bit deeper into today. Now, just before we start decisive action, I just want to make that clear that so many of the successful people that I've looked up and researched and done studies on say that decisive action is one of the keys to their success. And it's so not so much about, well, the way that I've heard it is you make a decision and you stick with it. So it comes to making a decision quickly an informed decision quickly and then sticking with that and not backing down and, you know, oh, I'm unsure. Did I make the right decision? Now, there is two sides to this. You don't want your ego just to say, no, this is the only way. You want to be open-minded and look at other people's point of views and perspectives. And if there is an outcome that is greater or better suited than the one that you've decided to go again, to go with, 
having the ability to change and admit you're wrong is very powerful as well. But deciding, deciding quickly and sticking with that, with the knowledge that your initial um, ideas or initial thoughts were correct. And in trading, I think this is quite important because especially as scalpers and a one minute chart, if you're umming and ahhing about something, either decide, no, I'm too undecisive and stay out or decide, yes, I'm taking this and I'm either going to wait for a pullback or I'm going to enter straight away. Because the worst thing we can do is take an entry after it's already started to move up into profits. And you will soon find the more that you trade like that, the it's crazy how much different it makes. It changes your risk to reward. If price pulls back, then you're in drawdown much earlier than you needed to be, which can affect your emotions. And it really has a huge impact on the way you manage your trades. And so the ability to go, this is what I want to do. I'm going to do it. And this is how I'm going to enter in doing it is going to increase your profitability and the way, I suppose, the ease of management of trades as well. Because if you can be decisive and act on that decisiveness or that decision, then you're going to go into your trade with confidence and you're probably going to have the best um, entry depending on if you were waiting for a pullback or whether you're going straight in for the entry. But you'll also then be open-minded to look for the things that are going to help benefit your trade. If you're still undecided, you might be looking for signs to see why you're wrong. So if you're decisive and you go with that, then you're going to be looking for signs to show that you're correct and managing the trade in a positive way. If you decide and then start to doubt yourself, all you're going to be doing is starting to bring it awareness and look for signs that say, oh, see, I was right. This wasn't the best trade. And you're going to start to second guess and go against your initial thing and start looking for some of these um, signs. I can't think of a better word. So say we're in a buy and we're just getting a pullback and you're like, oh, no, it's turning around on me. I'm going to exit. But really, that was just a pullback. But your indecisiveness then has made you go, oh, I'm doubting myself. Let's just get out. You take a loss. And then what? Candle pulls straight back up because your initial evaluation or initial um, oh, assessment um, is correct. And it just continues off. And then you're kicking yourself. You're like, oh, why did I do this? So this comes down to decisive action and the ability to stick with your decision. Now, that doesn't say stay stubborn and go, oh, there's an LC exit, which is on my trading plan to always exit, but I'm going to ignore that because I'm right. We have to be careful of our ego here. But make a decision until there is a clear, decisive reason why you have been proven wrong or that the trade has turned around. You know, on my trading plan, it says always take LC exits. If I get into a buy and it pulls back and I'm like, oh, I don't know. It hasn't given me the exit yet, so I'm not going to take an exit. I'm just going to allow my trading plan to do the thing it knows how to do and not let my indecisiveness and my emotions take control. Does that make sense? Chuck some ones in the chat if that resonates with anyone. If you've been indecisive as well, because I know what it can be like when you're sit sitting at the charts and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, and then you enter. And actually, chuck some twos in the chat. I want to see... If most of the time when you go, oh, I don't know, put twos in the chat if you think most of the time you do that, it's actually a loss. And put threes in the chat if you think most of the time you do that, it's a win. Or put fours if you've got no idea. It doesn't matter. It goes 50-50. So if you think every time you're indecisive, but you take a trade anyway, and you think it's a loss most of the time, put a two. If you think it's a win most of the time, put a three. And if you've got no idea and you think it's just 50-50, then put a four. Yeah, so we got the twos. Most of the time, my indecisions is a loss. Yeah, exactly. So same for me. Every time that I'm indecisive, not every time, there's always times that go against the, uh, the norm. But most of the time that I am indecisive and I enter the trade anyway, it's either a loss or I get out with two points or a break even because I've managed it poorly. Even if it is the right move, I've man usually managed it poorly. And I get out at like break even or two, three points. And so what I've, have I done for me now, because I'm an over trader or I used to be, hang on, I'm going to correct myself here. I just said I'm an over trader. That was my old identity. I'm now identifying not as an over trader. I'm identifying as a successful trader because this last three weeks since I've gotten my journal, I have not over traded once. So I no longer am calling myself an over trader. I'm going to retract that statement and identify as a successful trader who trades just the right amount. 
But um, from someone who used to overtrade, if I'm to jump in and go, yeah, I'm going to squeeze this indecisive, or oh, I don't know, and then I get taken out with two points, what have I done? I've taken away one of my trades. I now limit myself to four trades maximum, maximum. Three is my goal, but there are some circumstances where if I've had back and forth, four is my max. So if I take one of these trades, indecisive, not too sure, jump in, lose two points, what have I done? I've just struck out, wasted one of my, my opportunities for a good trade. Now, I don't use these all the time. Sometimes I only take one trade. But my point is the patience needs to be there. And as we're taking only the best trades, if I'm already indecisive about my trade, just stay out. When in doubt, stay out. Okay? So decisive action is important, but you have to see it from both sides. And you can't let your ego just to go, yes, I'm 100% right now. I know that's a bit count counterintuitive to what we're talking about with good intuition and decisive action, but you have to find the balance in these things. Okay, now I want to continue on with that strong emotional intelligence. Now, that's the main point that I want to discuss here today is emotional intelligence. There's four areas of emotional intelligence that I was looking up, and this is self-awareness, self-management, um, social management, and relationship management. And we touched on these just briefly yesterday, but I want to go into them a bit deeper. So self-awareness, and this is completely in line with all the stuff that we've been talking about before I even discussed emotional intelligence, and that is having a decision to bring awareness to the positive right? Self-awareness is having the ability to see you for really who you are and how your thoughts, your emotions, and your behaviors present themselves. Are they in line with your core values and your inner standards, for example? So having self-awareness is your ability to acknowledge the emotions and behaviors that take control of your life. The emotions and behaviors and thoughts that come to the forefront of your mind when you're trading. This is the entire reason I made this journal. And the more I do this research into it, the more I'm happy that I've done it the way I've done it, because these are the things that we need to be bringing to our attention. Bring awareness to, am I always getting frustrated? Am I always getting fearful? Am I always getting sad that I'm lost? Do I get really paranoid and unable to manage myself when I'm in drawdown? Self-awareness, which is one of the four pillars of high emotional intelligence, is being able to acknowledge and see these behaviors, thoughts, and emotions for what they are. Not hiding from them, not lying to yourself, not pretending like, oh, yeah, that doesn't actually happen to me, when really we all know that it does. You're only lying to yourself. Self-awareness is acknowledging these behaviors, acknowledging these thoughts, and acknowledging these emotions. And for me, the best way to do that is to write them down. Sometimes I don't even go back, but writing them down in the time, real time, I'm like, whoa, I knew that was kind of there. But now that I'm writing it down, I'm really getting into the deepness of it. And this is actually what I'm doing. And the more you write it down, the more you're like, hang on, I've written this three times today. There's obviously some connection there. So this self-awareness is hugely important when we're talking about emotional intelligence. Next is self-management. And I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's managing those emotions, behaviors, and thoughts. First, we need to be bring awareness to them. And once we know what we're doing and how we're behaving and how we're responding, then we can find ways to manage them. Once we've found ways to manage them, and this could be different from ev for everyone, by the way, you know, every single person on this call might have a different emotion that fires up a lot faster than the person, than the other people on this chat. And so therefore they need to manage their, their self, their behaviors, their emotions in a different way. And this is all about self-exploring, self-discovery, finding out who you are. Now, social awareness, I think, is extremely important, finding empathy for others. However, when we're talking about trading, it's kind of us versus ourselves. And we have to understand that what we're doing is we are trading on a chart that is a representation of every single other person on that chart in that particular moment. So if you see things like fear and greed and huge parts of volume burst in and news articles, for example, news perfect for social awareness, we hear something happening in the news. What do we do? We stay out because we know the markets are going to go crazy. At the start, I just thought news, stay away. But if you understand emotional intelligence and understand what that is representing, that's representing everyone's fear or greed in the market at that particular time. Fear and greed leading up to the emotion, fear and greed during the news. 
sorry, fear and greed leading up to the news, fear and greed during the news or market open, and then the fear and greed that precedes that time. So that's why it's good to stay out. If you understand what's going on, now this can be more towards fundamental trading. And I don't think you need to get into fundamental trading to be a successful trader, but having an understanding of the fundamentals and what's happening in the economy definitely does help. I know that when I was trading, when tweet was uh, when uh, Trump was president, that I had to be kind of cautious because anything that comes in from tweets from Trump's mouth in Twitter or wherever it came from just sent the charts crazy. So we had to have that kind of social awareness of what's going on during the wars, during an economic crash, during I don't know elections. This affects the charts. If we have an awareness of this. We can incorporate that into how we respond, how we behave, and the emotional, um, the emotions that we're going to feel during that time. And last is relationship management. And now we've spoken about relationships on this call. And the general concept of relationship management is kind of like supervising and maintaining relationships. And in a general sense, you'll talk about re relationships between co-workers, relationships between boss and employee, maybe relationship between um, husband and wife, child and son. But what we speak about a lot on this call is relationship with self, our relationship with money, our relationship with our inner child, seeing as that's where most of the trauma and all the emotion comes from, right? So supervising and maintaining these relationships. And we've got to understand that we are changing all the time. We are growing, developing, learning new things, expanding. And what does this do to relationships? It makes them change. Think about some of the friends you had when you were seven years old. Do you still have those relationships now? Maybe you do. I personally, one of my best friends I've had, known since I was 10 years old, and I'm so grateful to have that relationship for 20 plus years. But I've definitely lost a lot on the way and I've outgrown a whole bunch more. We do have the ability to outgrow our own personal relationships, relationships with ourselves. Maybe if you have an inner child trauma that you're stubborn or you did something in the past that you regret and you're holding on to that strongly, the growth and management of the relationship with you and your previous self over time can develop to a stage where you let that go and you find freedom and release from that. Your relationship with money where you're like, oh my God, I'm coming from a poverty mindset and everything needs to be held onto because money is life and without it, we're going to perish and die. Whatever it is, as you grow and learn new things and have new things happen to you and encounter new people and new concepts and new ideas and shift that perspective, those relationships can change as well. Relationships with self, relationship with money, relationship with whatever you want to be related to, really. You know, identity, relationship with self. So all these things increase our emotional intelligence. The awareness of ourself, our self-awareness, the management of ourself, how these behave how these behaviors, thoughts, and emotions affect us. The social awareness, you know, what what's happening in the economy, what's happening around us, what what's going on in the environment that I'm in, both internal and hugely external. And then the relationship management. If we can incorporate all these things and work on them and development, this will incorporate. Uh, this will increase our emotional intelligence. And over time, these things are really going to help us on the charts. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think the reason that Teresa is such a good trader is because she has this high emotional intelligence. She's got such a kind heart, which she shows in the way she teaches. She understands herself to a very good um, level. And she's happy to discuss it and help people. You know, her relationship with money that she's worked through, she spent years in personal growth and development before she got to where she got to. And I'm sure her relationship with money has changed over time as well. So this high level of emotional intelligence really does act as a key factor in my books to the success on the charts. Okay, so hope you jotted some of them down. I hope you can go back and look at these things or re-listen to this podcast and think about where you stand with your self-awareness, your self-management, your social awareness, and your relationship management and see, you know, what is your emotional intelligence like? Can it do with having some work? Can it do with discussing it, developing it, growing it? You know, don't be afraid to find an accountability partner that's in trading and discuss these things that we talk about. You know, accountability partners in trading, we look at, oh, you know, we need to assess our charts. We need to go over the trades, which is extremely important. It's definitely a key aspect to, to helping you grow in trading. But don't be afraid to talk about your relationships with money. Don't be afraid to talk about your self-awareness and how you think you can develop and manage 
yourself and your own emotions because these are key aspects of trading as well. And if you've got an accountability buddy that can go to you, hey, every time that you feel frustration and get mad at the, the thing, I want you to message me so we can discuss it. These are key aspects to help you grow and develop as a trader, just as much as analyzing the trades, just as much as going through your charts and understanding all the technical analysis. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to take the afternoon off. Like I said, I've got an appointment to scoot to. I love you all. I really appreciate you all showing up here every single time. And to the people listening on the podcast, we'll be back Tuesday. Um, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy Monday. And yeah, love to you all. Bye.